Hi, I'm Liam Milan. In this video, we're going to look at MIDI clip recording and editing. Now, in Ableton Live, we have two different approaches to doing this based on the two main views, arrangement view and session view. So I'm going to start off with session view based on the idea that we might want to jam and loop around our idea as we build it up. So I've already loaded in a piano sound. So if I press the record arm button for that, my MIDI controller allows me to access that sound. And I also, if I record on my drum kit, I have a, a drum kit or a selection of drum sounds across the MIDI keyboard there as well. Now immediately from loading these sounds in, every sound is at its full volume and I need to get these sounds to coexist within our actual mix of sounds. So I'm just going to go to the volume control in session view and pull that down a little bit. If I want to fine tune that, I can hold shift. It gives me much greater resolution of control for the amount of movement I do with my, uh, my mouse or trackpad. And I'm also going to bring down the piano a little bit too, just so it's not you know, overwhelming in terms of volume. Also keeping a look at our main master volume as well to make sure that that's not going red, which means it's peaking and our sound is actually being distorted as we listen to it. So recording. Um, we have to somehow put in our drum track as a basis of what we might start with or our piano part, but we need a reference point. We need a timing reference. So the first thing I want to do is use the tempo section and get it to the right kind of tempo for the style of music I plan to make. So I'm thinking of some sort of kind of house, deep house kind of vibe. So I can either drag or enter the numeric value of the beats per minute I want for this particular project. So 128 BPM is the, the kind of area I want to start with. Now the reference point, if I hit the play button right now, we can see that the actual position of our playback is moving there, but we can't hear any reference point in terms of musical timing. So that's where the metronome comes into play. So if I enable the metronome and hit the space bar, we can hear a guide in terms of where the computer is in terms of being our conductor and playing the beats and measures. Um, and if that's too loud as well, we have the option over here to turn down what's called our audition volume. So if I turn that down, the metronome is not so loud now. It's a good idea not to have the metronome too loud because over the course of years that can really uh, affect your hearing. So um, next thing I want to do is basically get ready to record and there's a few different ways we can do this. The behavior of session view is that if I hit record in the actual clip slot or the empty clip slot, it immediately starts recording and as you can see, a MIDI clip has been created and un unless I play something in, it's empty. So what's happening is I'm basically catching up with the fact it started and then I'm deciding when to play. We can change that with what's called a pre-count. So if I just click into that MIDI clip there and hit the backspace button to remove that, if I go to the drop down menu next to the metronome, we can choose to have a count of four, a bar, uh, before it actually records, or two bars or four bars, depending on your preference. So one bar is okay for me. If you struggle to be ready to play within one count of four beats, you might want to set it to longer, and you'll notice the difference. So if I now hit the, um, the record arm button or the launch button, I can hit space to stop recording at that point, or I could have hit the, uh, the play button, which was the record button initially, and that will then stop the recording of the clip and then begin, begin to immediately start looping that clip as well. So at the moment, what we have is a kick drum that's played in there. And at the moment, because it took a while for me to reach to the trackpad and press stop or press the play, um, the space bar to stop the recording there. It's not a clean musical clip length. It's five bars, it's rounded it off to, and I actually want it to be four. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually edit the duration of this MIDI clip. So I'll grab the loop brace here and drag that to the measurement of just four beats. Another way of doing this is we have a little punching section here which we can scroll or we can enter the actual numerical value. So if that was at five, I can put in, I actually want that to be four bars and punch that in now. So if I press the play button again, we 
we can hear that that's actually looping in a musical manner now. What isn't musical is some aspects of my timing, and I need to tidy that up. So one way of doing this is to manually grab the notes and make them slot, because there's a snap function enabled to the relevant position it should be in on the grid. Um, the other method is to quantize these beats. So in order to quantize, what I need to do is use the control button or right click, and it'll bring up uh, various functions in a menu. And there's a quantize setting here, which is command and use the shortcut key. Now, if I select that, you'll notice all those uh, MIDI notes get aligned correctly to the beat. And in terms of a kick drum in electronic music, generally, if that's the backbone of the beat, that needs to be robotically in the right place. So what we can do now is we can record over that clip with another uh, layer of percussion, percussion parts. Now you'll notice there's no record button available within that clip now, and we have to go to a different section of the Ableton Live environment. So if we move up to the top here, we have a session record button, which allows us to do what's called overdubbing. So not removing the original material in the MIDI clip, but augmenting it and adding new layers to that. So if I hit the, um, the session record button, And again, the timing's a bit off on that, so I'm just going to highlight by clicking and dragging those particular events, and then control click and quantize those as well. So now that's a kick and a snare drum beat. And then I want to add something else on top of this, so let's have some cymbal work. So I'll find a hi-hat. Go for that middle one there and add that in on top of that. So again, session record. So the same again, if I want to mechanically correct that, I can do a quantize and just uh, snap that. There is a little bit of human feel in there, so I may decide to leave that in there. The key thing to think at this point is, what's that clicking noise that's going on in the background? It's our metronome, which we don't need anymore because we now have our own customized reference point to the rhythm that's happening in our song. So we could turn the metronome off at that point. And then let's have a look at the same process and add a new layer, but do this in arrangement view instead. So. At the moment, my drum pattern within my MIDI clip will keep playing and loop it around. I'll just quickly quantize that one as well, just to tidy that one up. And then we move over to arrangement view. And we basically want to create a loop, which happens by default in session view. In arrangement view, we have to manually enable that to happen. And let's come up with an idea for a piano part. So I want to loop around the first two bars in this project. So I can either manually grab the looping brace here, or I can highlight the area that I intend to loop, control and click that area, and choose loop selection. So now you'll notice at the top, the looping mode is enabled. And if I hit the play button now, We have the drums playing in session view, and we're ready to record something into arrangement view at this point. So I'm going to record um, the piano track. I'm just going to press play for a minute and just figure out something that I'm going to play over those two bars. So that's actually a four bar phrase. So I'm just gonna change my loop brace and extend that across. Now, unlike in session view, uh, things will automatically uh, loop in terms of the MIDI clip. In this case, when we hit record, the clip will actually keep recording again and again over the loop period. And later on, we can edit out our preferred take, should we say, or pass of that recording.
Okay, so I had a few passes at that and obviously experimented a little bit with how I played that. Now it's time for me to decide which one I actually want to use as my uh, pass of the recording. So I'm going to just, uh, I've double clicked on the MIDI clip within arrangement view, which brings up the MIDI editor. And then I'm going to zoom out just by grabbing the top of the uh, timeline within the editor, which lets me see all of the different takes that I've done. Now, if I just drag the play marker or the start marker here across, it allows me to very quickly slide the content to the take that I want to hear. In my case, take two was my favorite out of the, out of the four passes that I did. Now, what we can do just to tidy things up a little bit is we can drag the end marker and tidy that up as well. And you see that makes this a more visually clean MIDI clip to work with from this point. And again, we can quantize what we're doing. If I zoom in and highlight all those notes, quantize will do the same as we've done with the drums before. If I go to quantize settings, there's some slightly different alterations we can do here. So quantize by default has always been just, you know, I'm a robot, I'm gonna mechanically drag all those MIDI notes to exactly where those grid lines are. Now, based on the timing of my playing, there might be some what we call humanization aspects of what I've played, so those slight imperfections that makes it like a real performance. Or maybe I've gone a little bit sloppy at times and I just need to tighten it up less severely than absolutely sticking things on the grid. So what we have when we do the quantize settings is the amount of quantization, how powerful it is, what the magnetism is like of those notes against those grids. And if we weaken the strength of the quantize by taking its percentage down, it nudges them towards the relevant grid lines, but doesn't completely destroy all that humanized timing out of it as well. So if I press OK at this stage and just make sure that the the note start and the note end are set as appropriate. So I want to quantize the beginning of these notes, but I want to leave the length of the notes as they are. I don't want to change those. So I'm going to turn that off and press OK. And then I slightly nudge those parts together and then we can play that whole sequence. So there we have it. What we've covered is recording between our session view workflow, where we're gonna loop and vibe and layer things. And then I've gone through the, the process of also using the arrangement view as well. So you can have a feel for how different it is to work in these two workflows and start getting a sense of when you might reach for one recording method over the other.